Lesson 9.3 is about arcs and central angles. Okay, first a little vocabulary. An arc is an unbroken part of the circle. So in red right here, this part of the circle that's bounded between these two endpoints, uh, here and here, I call that red section of the circle an arc. And uh, if I draw a radius, so in blue I've got a radius from the endpoint of uh, the two endpoints of the arc. I draw the two radiuses to the center of the circle. Um, I form an angle with the vertex at the center of the circle, and I call that angle the central angle. Okay, so an important thing to know about how arc measure, we measure the arc. Uh, in degrees, and an arc measure is exactly the same as the measure of a central angle. So, for example, if this central angle here is a 100 degree angle, then this arc measure is 100 degrees. Okay, the arc right in here is what would I call a 100 degree um, arc. So, these are equal. Okay, in this next diagram, I'll define minor arcs and major arcs. A minor arc is the blue arc uh, right here in this diagram, and a minor arc is any arc that's less than 180 degrees. Now, the major arc is the other part of the circle. We know that the entire circle has a measure of 360 degrees, so the major arc is 360 degrees minus the minor arc. So in this diagram, the major arc is the big red arc. So it goes, um, it's always greater than 180 degrees, and it's 360 minus the, the, mi the minor arc. So as an example, in this diagram, if that minor arc there is 70 degrees, then the major arc that's in red is 360 degrees minus 70 degrees, so that would be uh, 290 degrees. So now let's talk about how we name uh, minor arcs and major arcs. So this, uh, again, we're back to this minor arc that's in, uh, in blue, and uh, let's put some endpoints on the arc and call those endpoints A and B. So I name that minor arc with a little arc over the letters A, B. So that names the minor arc. Now, if I want to name the other part of the circle, the red arc the, uh, that goes around, it also has endpoints A and B. So I can't call it arc A, B because it would be confused with the minor arc AB, and I want to describe the big arc in red. So what you have to do is you have to have a third point when you're describing a major arc. So let's put a point mm, C right over here. So now I could describe this red arc because I travel from A through C to B. So I could describe the, that major arc. Um, I still have the A and the B. On, as the endpoints, but in the middle I have the C. So that goes, that says go from A to B, but go through C. And that tells me I'm talking about the big major arc in red. So we name minor arcs with two letters that are the endpoints of the arc, and we name major arcs with three letters that are the endpoints of the arc. And of course, if I have uh, a circle that's divided into two arcs, a minor arc and a major arc, the sum of their measures is 360 degrees. Okay, we have a special name for um, when we have a chord that goes to the center. Remember, it's called a diameter. When I have an arc where the central angle is a diameter of the circle, um, I have, uh, like, called this red arc, an arc with a measure of exactly 180 degrees, I call that kind of arc a semicircle. So a semicircle is the name for a 180 degree arc. Okay, next we have the arc addition posture. And this is very logical. It just says that we can take two adjacent arcs and add their measures to get the measure of the big arc. 
So if I want to get the measure of the arc that's bounded by these two radii right here, so the whole arc that goes across here, I can add up those two adjacent arcs. So the big red arc right here is, uh, has a measure of 40 degrees plus 80 degrees, or uh, 120 degrees. So that's the arc addition postulate, just that you can add adjacent arcs, their measures, to form the measure of a bigger arc. Okay, next we have a theorem about congruent arcs and congruent central angles. And that's that if we have the same circle or two congruent circles, that congruent arcs will have congruent central angles. This seems uh, to go without saying, but let's draw a picture of what this looks like. So let's just start with one circle. If I have one circle uh, and I have, let's see, two arcs somewhere in the circle, um, let's put one here and one here. So if I have information that this arc is congruent to this arc, so say that this is uh, 30 degrees and this is 30 degrees, well then uh, what it means is the central angles that go along with those are also congruent to each other. Whoops. So this angle would be congruent to this angle. Okay, now if I have two congruent circles, let's say that uh, I know that the circle on the left and the circle on the right are congruent because let's say that this radius is 6 and that the radius on the other circle is 6. So that would make the two circles congruent to each other. So it means that if somewhere on this circle I have a, uh, uh, a 30-degree uh, arc, so we'll make this red arc right here 30 degrees, that if these are on um, congruent circles, that um, this um, angle measure, this central angle, will also be the same as the one over here. Okay? So congruent arcs have congruent central angles uh, in the same circle or in congruent circles, and vice versa. Congruent central angles will have congruent arcs. Okay, next a little practice with just finding the measure of the central angle. So in this diagram, I have an arc that's 95 degrees. So what would this central angle right here be? Well, you'd be right if you said it is also, whoops, 95 degrees. Okay, in this next example, I have to find the measure of the central angle that goes along with that minor arc. So first I have to find the measure of the minor arc that's right here. So I can see that that uh, measure is 360 degrees minus uh, 280 degrees. So that arc is 80 degrees, and the central angle that goes with that is also 80 degrees. Okay, and then the next example, I want to find the uh, central angle where the little blue blank is. So uh, I first look at the arc, and I see I have a 250-degree uh, arc, and I have a 70-degree central angle. So uh, anyway, if I add up the, uh, well, I know that that 70-degree, first of all, central angle goes with the 70-degree arc. So, and then going around this way, I have a 250. So this one's a 70. So if I add up the 250-degree arc and the 70-degree arc, that is 320 degrees. So now I know this remaining arc, which I'll make green, this green arc will have a measure of 360 minus 320, or 40 degrees. So now I know that that central angle is a 40 degree, oops, 40 degree angle. Okay, for this last little example, I have a circle, and it has a diameter AB drawn through the center of it. And uh, I see I also have point C on the circle, and I have sort of a, 
triangle drawn. I have a radius from the center out to C, and then a radius from the center to A and the center to B. So I sort of have this triangle in there, and I'm, I'm told that measure of angle 1 is 60 degrees, and I have to find the measure of angle 2. So let's do this. Let's take that little triangle um, that 1 and 2 are on, and the line, and look at it like this. And here's angle 1, and here's angle 2. And what you notice is that angle 1 is what we call, remember this is an exterior angle to the triangle. So angle 1 should be equal to the sum of angle 2 and that angle up there that we don't have measured. Um, so I know it's equal to the sum of those two. So that's okay. So how do I know now what angle 2 is? So the other thing that I have to think about is that all radiuses in the same circle have the same length. So if I go from the center out to A, that radius has the same length as the radius from the center out to C. Okay, which makes, so that on this diagram, makes this triangle isosceles, doesn't it? This leg is equal to this leg. So now I know that angle 2 is congruent to the angle up here. So if angle 1 is 60, uh, angle 1 has to be this equal to the sum of angle 2 and the, the little top angle up at C. So um, measure of angle 2 and the measure of that top angle uh, must each be 30 degrees because... Um, the sum of, ang of, of these, well, I'll draw them in. Okay, so if this angle was 60, uh, we said these were each 30. Those are each 30. And uh, we know then that this one here is 120, if we had to figure that out. So uh, we can use that exterior angle um, theorem for triangles to find uh, the measure of angle 2. And that's it.